Welcome to our lecture online and now let's talk about the effect of the Milinkovitch cycles on the Earth's climate. Remember the Milinkovitch cycles are 100,000 year cycles where the Earth's ellipticity changes. It goes from a near circle orbit to a much more elliptical orbit and back every 100,000 years or so, mainly due to the gravitational attraction be between Earth and Jupiter and Earth and Saturn, the two giant planets in our solar system which keep on tugging the Earth at various stages when the Earth goes around the Sun and when the Jupiter and Saturn goes around the Sun, the relative forces between the gravitational force of the Sun to the Earth and the planets Jupiter and Saturn, we end up with the changing of the Earth's elliptical orbit. Currently, today, the, the eccentricity is about 0 0.017, which, relatively, which roughly means that we're about 1.7% closer and 1.7% farther than the average distance between the Earth and the Sun uh, at the various stages of its orbit. So what that means currently, uh, when the Earth is experiencing winter in the northern hemisphere, we're about one and a half million miles closer than the average of 93 million miles. And when the Earth is experiencing summer in the northern hemisphere, we're about one and a half million miles farther away from the Earth, which means that we receive about six and a half percent more energy from the sun during the northern hemisphere's winter and about six and a half percent less energy during the northern hemisphere's summer. So you would suspect that when we're closer to the sun, the Earth would be warmer because when the northern hemisphere is experiencing winter, the southern hemisphere is experiencing summer and you would expect that the average out, but it doesn't. The reason for that is that the northern hemisphere has a lot more of the land mass and the southern hemisphere has a lot more open ocean. And because of that, even though we're significantly closer during the winter at the northern hemisphere, the Earth is about 7.5 degrees centigrade colder, which is about 13 and a half degrees Fahrenheit colder in our summers than in our winters, which is amazing when you think about it. We're that much closer to the sun, we receive 6.5% more energy, yet it's 7.5 degrees centigrade colder on the Earth during our, our uh, winters. And of course, when we experience summer and we're farther away from the sun, we, we receive 6.5% less energy, it'll be 7.5 degrees centigrade warmer. It seems very counterintuitive, but again, the way the Earth is uh, shaped with the continents mostly in the north and mostly open water, open ocean in the south, it does make quite a bit of difference. On top of that, affecting the climate because of Kepler's second law that when we're close to the sun, the Earth travels faster. When we're farther away from the sun, the Earth travels slower. Our winters are about six days shorter than the summers and that alone also makes a tremendous effect on the winters. The winter will start later, winter will end later, so the time for the ice buildup is shorter. It is a lot, um, relatively speaking, we're receiving a lot more energy during our winter time from the sun, all dampening the winter's effect. But what will happen eventually? Well, at some point in the future, the eccentricity will go all the way to its maximum value of 0 0.0679, which means that we're significantly closer at perihelion and significantly farther at, farther at aphelion. In other words, we are, hmm, that's about seven, that's uh, more than six million miles closer and more than six million miles farther away than the average value of about 93 million miles, which means that we'll receive 31% more energy from the sun when we're closer and 31% less energy when we're farther away. Now, what also will happen at that point is because it will happen both ways, but when this situation happens, when we're during our summer, northern hemisphere summer, when we're close to the sun, and northern hemisphere winter when we're farther away from the sun, then things will become very interesting on the Earth. What will happen is that during the summers, it will be about 20 degrees centigrade warmer around, all around the world on average, and during the northern hemisphere winters, it will be about 20 centigrade degrees. That's more than, not more than, but almost, 40 degrees Fahrenheit colder in the, uh, on the world when the northern hemisphere is experiencing winter at a time when we're far away from the sun, when the eccentricity is at its highest value. Not only that, because of Kepler's laws, the Earth will move much, much slower when we're in our winter and much faster in the summer. Summers will be much shorter, winters will be much longer, as much as 15 days difference between summer and winter, and so the temperature swing will be absolutely enormous between the summer and the winter. The winters will probably start much sooner. October will probably already be in deep winter. Winters will last till April, maybe as late as May. Summers may be hot, but will be very short, and the ice will build up over those enormous winters when we're re receiving that much less energy from the sun will be 
amazing, and the ice sheets will come back like they did before and start covering much of North America, and Northern Europe, and Northern Asia, just like they have in the past for cycle after cycle along the Milinkovitch cycle of the 100,000 year cycles. So, yes, the orbit of the Earth is a very big factor on the climate of the Earth, and you can see a very big factor on the temperature changes on the Earth. Things are now very mild because of the fact that we are closer to the sun in the North Hemisphere winters and farther away. This is a real benefit for us because it, it makes the winters much milder, even though it is 7.5 degrees colder. That is small compared to what it will be in the future when the cold weather will return to the Earth. So, astronomy gives us quite an insight on the climate of the Earth.